Professional wrestling. It's seen as a topic of ridicule, fans the world over. Casual fans, they ridicule it. In the old days it was boxing, it was compared to boxing. It was said that, oh, wrestling's okay but it's fake. Why don't you watch boxing? Boxing's a real man sport. They hate each other properly, they give each other a real pounding, and then the winner comes out in the end, the real man. And then UFC came along and really blew both sports out of the water. UFC was professionalin, professionalin, professional wrestling done real. It was cage fighting, it was brutal, it was bloody, it was submissions, it was everything you want from professional wrestling but in a real environment where it's not fake. So, why am I doing this video? I'm doing this video to compare the three and compare them now in the modern day of 2011. Well, it's almost 2012 and most people watching this video are probably 2012 for you. But anyway, this weekend we had three events. Three, I believe all three were on pay-per-view in America. First of all, on Saturday night, we had the WBA and IBF light welterweight championships of the world defended by Amir Khan against Lamont Peterson. Was that his name? Is it on my list? Lamont Peterson. Saying it just seemed it sounded weird. I felt like Lamont wasn't a name. It probably isn't a name. His mum probably made it up. Anyway, Lamont Peterson versus Amir Khan. Boxing, WBA, IBF, light heavyweight, light welterweight championship match. Then we had a UFC 140, headlined by John Jones versus Lyoto Mishida, the UFC light heavyweight championship match. And then we had TNA wrestling on Sunday night which was headlined by the TNA World Heavyweight Championship match between Bobby Roode and AJ Styles. We had three main event matches there, which are all around the same calibre when it comes to their own their own sports. UFC, this wasn't the biggest UFC match ever. This was Machida John Jones. It wasn't a GSP match, it wasn't a Lesnar match, it wasn't the main draw in my opinion. Again, boxing, as big as Amir Khan is, he's not a Pacquiao, he's not a Mayweather, he's not a Klitschko, it's not one of those massive mega ma money matches. And again, TNA, not one of those mega money companies, they're not WWE, they're not WrestleMania. So these are all among the, about the same level in terms of what they give to their own industry. Right, let's get into it. The, because all three were on the same weekend, it gave fans who are fans of all, all three or casual fans, for example, a choice. Choose one of the three. You can you can pay you can watch one of the three. Pay to watch one. You gotta choose. Now I was thinking to myself, what would I choose if I was in that situation? If I had my fifty dollars and they gave me these three shows on a weekend and I really wanted to watch one. Which one would I choose? Well I'm gonna get sat by the end of the video. First of all we have this UFC event. We have this boxing event, we have this TNA event. All headlined by fights. I'm going to refer to the wrestling match as a fight as well because that's what it's supposed to be. It's not supposed to be a choreographed event. We're supposed to view it as a real fight. They, they book it as a real fight. They talk about it as a real fight. It's supposed to be seen as a real fight. That's what they're supposed to trick us into believing. That's the beauty of psychology of professional wrestling. Right. The main thing you want to know when coming into a fight is... Who's fighting, first of all? That's the first thing you want to know. You want to know who's fighting. Because if I'm going to spend my money, I want to know who's fighting. In UFC, you had John Jones versus Lyoto Mishida. The star power in this match isn't that big. I knew of Lyoto Mishida, I knew of him. But I just heard of John Jones. So to me, this wasn't a, this wasn't a, a match that was steeped in star power. John Jones is apparently one of the next big things in MMA, although he's already the light heavyweight champion, he's quite young, he's 24, he's only a year older than me, he's kick ass, don't get me wrong, but he's he's not a big draw in my opinion yet. It might, it might be in the box office, but to me, in terms of a casual fan, wanting to spend my money, he's not someone I want to pay to watch. Then we had Amir Khan versus Lamont Peterson. Amir Khan is a pretty decent draw, in my opinion. He's probably Britain's most publicised boxer at the moment. So, that's quite big. And then we had Bobby Roode versus AJ Styles. AJ Styles, the linchpin of TNA in the world title match against Bobby Roode, a young guy being given the chance for the world title. Star power, not so much. 
But AJ Styles got a fair amount of star power when it comes to TNA. So star power is okay in all matches. And I'd give boxing the edge out of the three so far. Then you want to know the characters. You want someone to get behind because if you're going to watch a fight, you really want to you want to choose your guy. You want it's like any sport. Sports fun to watch, but if you've got a team to support in it, it's even more fun to watch and you you get more out of it. So the John Jones Machida one, I personally didn't have a I didn't have a choice because to me either or it doesn't matter. I picked John Jones because he was the younger guy. He's he's around my age. So far, go on, John Jones, do it. Proud of you. Show me what I could be if I wasn't lazy. Basically, obviously, not everyone could be as good as him, but do you know what I mean? It shows that no matter how old you are, you can get to the top. Amir Khan Peterson. Amir Khan from my hometown of Bolton. My homeboy, Amir Khan, in a fight, defending his title. I was so behind him. Very much behind him. This is a character I'm so behind. Then we have Bobby Roode versus AJ Styles. Roode the heel who's turned on his faction. AJ Styles the good guy. But still, you don't really want to get behind AJ. You just sort of watch it and think, eh, it's okay. You don't really get behind him. You need someone to get behind. Again, I'd give Boxing the lead again. They had the character you could get more behind. Emotional investment now. You want to be emotionally invested. You want to know why they're fighting. You've already know who's fighting. You've already picked your guy. Now you want to know why they're fighting. In a, in UFC, mo the majority of the time, it's just a case of two guys that wanted to fight to find out who the better guy is, so they can go higher in their career. That's the concept as old as time. Who's the better man? But it's not a big draw to me. Two guys fighting in the street. Oh, I want to prove I'm better than you. Fair enough. Doesn't matter to me. Just a bunch of knobheads. Lamont, I mean, Lamont Peterson versus Amir Khan. The emotional investment in terms of why they're fighting wasn't there for me. Because to me, it was a case of Amir Khan just picking a fight with any of the top contenders from his division. Just so he could beat them and then move up a division. Did it work out? Don't think it did, did it? And then, professional wrestling. This is where professional wrestling has the edge. Professional wrestling has the chance... To get you so emotionally invested in their storyline that you really want to see one of these guys win, or at least you want to find out who wins. Doesn't matter who wins to you, but you're so emotionally invested. This is such a good storyline, you want to know where they're going with it. And it's, again, like I said, Bobby Roode's turned on his faction, he's turned on his mate AJ Styles, and AJ Styles is like, Oh, you ruin this, you ruin that. Why do I care about that? I don't care about that. I am not emotionally invested, Tina. You've done a poor job of getting me emotionally invested. So if I was going to. Ch I'd put all three of these down in my opinion and if, if I was going to put give any of the lead I'd give it to UFC Manu Mano prove who's the better man I'd go for that because that was the only one with any vague hint of a, a a plausible reason that I wanted to know I wanted to get to the root of so MMA so far has the lead then we get to the match itself the fight itself Going into it, we want to know what the crowd's like. If the crowd is buzzing for it, then we're going to get into it. First of all, I'm going to talk about the TNA crowd flat. Impact zone flat. We all know the impact zone. They'll cheer for whatever they want. It's flat, in my opinion. They just cheer when... They just seem to be cheering on cue. Like, yay, good guy. Boo, bad guy. Oh, woo, jump over the top rope. Boo, the bad guy just almost got a pinfall. Oh, on their count. Oh, please don't tap, please don't tap, that sort of thing. In my opinion, TNA's crowd, very low. Then we have the boxing. Lamont Peterson's in his hometown going for this WBA and IBF champ uh, light welterweight championship. The crowd were really behind him. The crowd really make you want to be watching this and really want to be invested into this. The crowd did really well. Then we get UFC. UFC is just another level. Because the matches are so short, and I'll get into that in a second, UFC have the massive, massive, massive advantage of the fans being rabid. This is a rabid fan base who want to see blood. They want to see violence. They want to see kick-ass action. And they are not afraid to hide it. They will be rabid and they will cheer all the way through these events. So here, UFC, MMA, they get the advantage on this topic. Now, unpredictability. 
You want to see if that's unpredictable. In TNA, fucking anything can happen. So watching it, but then in professional wrestling, that's sort of a bad thing. The bad thing where anything can happen because they just book stupid stuff. In terms of how the match would go, either, either these guys could have won, but I don't think anyone really thought AJ Styles was going to win. I think everyone thought that Bobby Roode was going to come out with the championship. In boxing, it wasn't that predictable. We all thought Amir Khan was going to win. You know? Pretty straightforward. The Mashida John Jones fight, on the other hand, that is unpredictable. MMA is so unpredictable. This is another part, another thing, another topic where UFC really do get that step ahead. Oh, what's next? Match lengths. UFC is so short. What is it? Three five minute rounds? Not enough. Very, very short, in my opinion. This is the thing, this is the one thing that they fall down on. This is the most, in my opinion. They, they really do fall down on this. The fact that matches can end so quickly in this match ended in three minutes. If I'm paying $50, I'm pissed off, in all honesty. Boxing again. Boxing can end early, but it, us it doesn't usually end that early. You've got the thought of a possible, I think this was 12 round fight, 3 minutes around, sort of 36 minutes. Pretty decent length. Uh, professional wrestling, you know you're going to get a good length match. So professional wrestling, in terms of length of match, they get the advantage here because professional wrestling can guarantee us that they're going to put on a really good match. They're going to put on a match with length that lasts a long enough time for you. So professional wrestling gets the edge here. Suspense. You want to feel that suspense like oh what's gonna happen there the suspense of it all professional wrestling you don't really get that suspense never I never feel that that era of suspense MMA very rarely you very rarely feel like oh my god what's gonna happen what's gonna happen boxing on the other hand there's always that edge of the seat stuff in my opinion especially with this match especially when it goes 15 rounds sorry 12 rounds I think it went especially when it goes 12 rounds and there's no winner and you're waiting for the judge's decision. That's such a tense moment. Boxing really does give you this amazing sense of, oh my god, I want to know what happens, I want to know what happens, please come on, come on, hurry up, hurry up, I really want to know who's won this fight, I really want to know who's won this fight. A massive bonus here. Brand promotion. UFC all the way through this, we're talking about their next main event already. UFC 141, December the 30th, Brock Lesnar will face Alistair Overeem in a dream match. All the way through, they were promoting the brand. They were already promoting the next one. Boxing, on the other hand, you, you can't really promote it. Although, at the end of the fight, Amir Khan, having lost to Lamont Peterson on decision, asked for a rematch, and Peterson said he'd give him a rematch. So, straight away, they'd book to their next match. But it's not going to happen until March. We've got a three month wait for the next one here. Whereas UFC. Are already promoting theirs for like three weeks time. Two weeks time I think it is now actually. No, I think it might be three. They're already promoting this fight for three weeks time. Whereas boxing has to promote the one for three months away. And TNA, I don't think they even mentioned the next preview. If they did, I, I was sort of zoned out. But we don't know who's going to be on the main event card. We sort of do because of how this one ended. But they might just end it on impact. So, although I'm really, I'm really excited for the the Lesnar fight. That's the one that goes on top. But I'm so excited for this Peterson car match because it's such a long wait. Though <clears throat> I'd give the brand promotion to boxing uh, to MMA. MMA's got, a, especially UFC, they've got a really good process here of building up matches. What's next? Oh, don't have focus on unpredictability, in-ring story, what actually happened in the match, Leo Mashida, John Jones, John Jones finished him with a chokehold within three, within four minutes, within five minutes definitely, finished him with a standing chokehold against the cage, I've never seen that before, ever, the in-ring story to the perfect story, it's real, it's legitimate, these two guys trying to best each other and John Jones coming out on top, but in such a short time, it comes out as a good story, massively entertaining, it was very short. Boxing, great story all the way through. Although Amir Khan just seemed lazy and seemed disinterested. If he was a bit more interested, this would have been so much better. If he'd attacked him a bit more, if he'd sort of gone at him, it would have been a lot more better. But as it was, he sort of seemed off a bit. 
ending story in the rude AJ Styles match was pretty good. Finish free all. It was all right. It wasn't terrible. But the way they ended it isn't the way I'd want to end a pay per view with just Robbie. Ro it made sense. Don't get me wrong. Robbie would run away from him. I'd do that if it was a real fight and I was three all and I was about to keep my title. I'd do what Bobby Roode did. But it's not the way you want to end a pay per view, especially because TNA had the benefit of being able to book and choose whatever they want. They could do anything they wanted. They could have Mike Tyson come to the ring and knock someone out. They could have the Klitschko's come out of nowhere. They could have fucking anyone. They could do anything. They could get George W. Bush if they put the money towards it. They could get anything they wanted to happen in this main event. And they chose Bobby Roode running away from AJ Styles. Not a main event caliber finish, is it? Talking points. So much to talk about at the end of the Khan fight. So much. Oh my god, did you see the fight? Did you see what happened? Khan was cheated. Khan wasn't cheated. He deserved to lose. He didn't deserve to lose. He should have the championship back. Should he have a rematch? They should definitely have a rematch. All the stuff to talk about after the match because it was such a good fight. Such a good ending to the fight. Such a good story told throughout it. And so, it, Khan was so bitter. He blamed the referee. I wasn't fighting one person, I was fighting two people. The crowd were against me. They turned the referee against me. The referee shouldn't have given those points against me. Great heel heat. Great heel heat. And if they do the rematch in England, the fans will be so much behind him. And there'll be so much against Peterson. And I feel sorry for Peterson because he really won me over in this fight. He seemed like a genuinely nice guy. Just fighting. Just trying to get his job done. Really good stuff. Excellent talking points. A lot of talking points in the TNA one as well, but negative stuff like, oh my god, did you see that? That was rubbish. Why would they end it like that? Obviously, they're going to try and build it up again for another pay view, but why should I pay for that pay view when I paid for this pay per view? And they give me this bullshit. Why? Why should I do that? Why should I rather pay for the next one if they've ended this one like this? At least with the camera, you're not, oh my god. If they do give me another match like this, then they'll give me another rematch and they'll be somewhere else. That'd be amazing. Talking points after John John Machida, very little to talk about. John Jones has just kicked his ass. Where does he go from here? That's all, that's all you can say. Where does he go from here? You can speculate, but there's not really that much to talk about in terms of this main event. Where does he go from here? It's just amazing. This is the story, story finished, as far as I'm concerned, with MMA. What else? Was it worth your money? That's the main thing. Was it... UFC. Very explosive. Very exciting. I totally enjoyed it. But what is it worth the $50? The match has ended really quickly. Frank May beat Big Nog in the first round. Little Nog beat Tito Ortiz in the first round. Chang Jung Sung beat Mark Kamenik in the first round. Cholish versus Clark. No, that was something else. Brian Ebersol versus Claude Patrick. I can't remember how long that lasted. Altogether, we probably got about 20 minutes worth of action on the main card of UFC 140. Is that worth the money? I don't think so. It was very exciting and I really did enjoy it, but it's not worth the money in my opinion. The boxing, totally worth the money. Totally worth the money in my opinion. It lasted 12 rounds with the promise of a rematch. The promise that you can now pay to watch it again. And the fact of the matter is it was free in England. It might have even been free in America. But I would have paid for this. I would have paid for this if I was in America. And I would... I may go to the rematch. If, if it's at the MEN, which I think it might be, because Amir Khan likes to fight the MEN, although it's not that big as much of a money draw as Las Vegas, obviously. If it's brought to the MEN arena, I will go to this fight. Was the TNA pay view worth the money? The TNA pay view was okay. And I don't know how much it cost. It probably cost about $30 or something. I don't think it was worth the money. So if we're talking about what it's worth the money, I'd say boxing's more worth the money if I'm paying for it, which is interesting because I'd say I see boxing as the lower, the lower of the three, in my opinion. But which did I enjoy more? I enjoyed the UFC a hell of well, I can't really compare it to the can fight. It's, it's totally different. But for excitement, for explosiveness, I probably ex ex uh, it was a lot more exciting. When Frank May brought Antonio. I don't know which one's Rodrigo, which one's Rogerio. But when he broke Big Nog's arm, oh, fucking hell, that was exciting. That was brutal. When Chang Jung Sung knocked out Mark Hominick in seven seconds, that was amazing. When John Jones choked out Machida so early, it was good. Very, very exciting stuff. 
I can't remember how many fights were on. Oh, seven fights in the undercard of the MA Khan fight, and they bored me. Undercard boxing matches are terrible. So, value for money, you pay for the main event. But when the main event produces, it really does produce. In terms of the TNA one, did I enjoy it? I enjoyed it to a certain extent. It was okay, the undercard was good. Austin Aries put on a good match with Kid Cash. Gail Kim and Mickey James with him. Uh, Jeff Hardy, Jeff Jarrett was okay. Robbie E versus Everett Young was okay. Which th so which one's better at the end of the day? If you're a fan of all three and you got to watch one, what do you watch on the night? I'd watch boxing. But would I? I'd per personally, I'd watch wrestling. Every time. But if I'm a casual fan, and my mates did this, a few mates who I used to go to uni with, I don't go anymore. Finished. Graduated. My mates, I was uh, on Facebook at the time watching it, and my mate messaged me saying, um, oh yeah, I've got a few of the lads around, we're watching the Khan fight. I was like, why are we not watching UFC? Oh, we're going to watch the Khan fight instead. I was like, oh, fair enough. Thought, you know, why not? So, they're casual fans, and they had the choice to watch either of the two, and they decided to watch the Khan fight. They decided to watch that, because if it would be more exciting, they ended up all falling asleep at night when watching it. I think one of them, one of them might have watched it. Losers. You're all wankers, by the way. But, um... Yeah, if I stayed up, and because of the excitement of the UFC, that kept me awake till 5am to, to get through all the way through the Khan fight as well. Fantastic stuff. End of the day, I'm a wrestling fan. I like all three. If I was to watch one, I'd, I'd choose professional wrestling. But what would you choose? What do you think of the three? Do you think it's an unfair comparison to compare all three sports? Professional wrestling, boxing, UFC. What is your preference? If you Did you watch either of these three fights? I'd love to hear your comments down below. I'd especially love a video response because I have a feeling that my video might have dragged on a bit. I might be a bit boring because I took too many notes. I took two pages worth of notes on a letter and on an envelope. I never take notes. I, I only just write the results down, but I took a load of notes for this, and it's probably not come out that well. So, But I want to hear your opinions on this, and I love video responses. I'd love to get that going. What do you think of professional wrestling in comparison to boxing and MMA? Do you think the fact that professional wrestling isn't so-called real do you think that affects it do you think that affects it in your eyes because one of the main reasons in my opinion why professional wrestling isn't as big as it used to be is because mma is considered real and you can't you want when you want to watch wrestling you want to look at the wrestlers as badasses people look at randy orton kids and they think he's a badass i want to watch him when he was kicking guys they had oh he's a badass but now we know Everybody knows if you're a badass, you're going to go to the UFC. You're not going to go to wrestling anymore. Even guys like Undertaker have come out and said, if MMA was big when I was coming up, I would have chosen that instead. If your main wrestlers are saying, I would have chosen that if I was younger, then that takes away all credibility from professional wrestling. Do you think that's a problem? A lot of the time it isn't. But at the end of the day, it still is because it doesn't bring in new fans because new fans think, why bother? They're all just pansies. They're all just actors. These aren't real fighters. These aren't real men. These are just built up muscle heads. But these guys in the UFC are real fighters. These guys who box are really skilled fighters. Manny Pacquiao is a huge draw. Floyd Mayweather is a massive draw. The Klitschko's a beast would beat anybody in a fight. People think that about pro wrestling and think, why watch it? Although, they, they don't, the entertainment aspect, everyone knows it's entertaining. But... It's entertaining because we're supposed to, while we watch it, think it's real. And we're supposed to get into it and we're supposed to buy into the characters. But how can you buy into the characters when there's things like MMA and boxing out there just glaring and saying, that's fake. That's fake because if they were hard, if they were tough at all, they'd be over here. Like Lesnar did. Like Lashley did. Like Batista even wanted to do. So yeah, what do you think of the topic? Do you think boxing is a better form of entertainment than pro wrestling? Do you think MMA is a better form of entertainment than pro wrestling? It all matters on the topic at hand, and it all, it's all subjective in my opinion, because I could have chosen a, a fight between 
And then, let's see, um, the David Hay fight where he fought the other English guy. I forgot his fucking name now. But yeah, basically, David Hay fought another English guy. And Aldi Harrison. David Hay fought Aldi Harrison. It was boring as shit. I mean, when I was at uni last year, I watched it with my mates, and it was fucking boring. This TNA peer review was better than that fight. So it's all, it all depends on what event you end up watching and what your personal tastes are. I like to see action, no matter what it is. Whether it's proper fighting, or whether it's choreographed, Technical wrestling, skilled work, great in ring story told by a Mark Henry versus a Daniel Bryan, or great in ring story told by even a Mark Henry versus a Chuck Palumbo. That would be a, a good match because Henry can tell a story in the ring. I like to see a story unfold before my eyes, and stuff like Amir Khan, they tell a story. That Amir Khan fight told a fantastic story. The John Jones fight started to tell a story. The Frank Mir fight definitely told a story at the UFC 140. The Tito Ortiz fight definitely told a story and was a definite signal of a downfall of a superstar of that sport. Professional wrestling has the ability to hit those highs when they really do try. But do they hit often enough? I want to hear your opinions. Come on, what are you waiting for? Get that camera out. Get that webcam turned on. Get your fingers clicking on the keyboard. I'm going to send this video around to as many people as possible and say, hey, what are your opinions on this video? And I want to know your opinions, no matter what it is. You can write, I hate MMA. You can hate, write, I hate boxing. You can write your videos stupid. Write whatever you want. Write your opinion. I want to know your opinions. I want to share my opinions. I want to get this topic going. This is a good topic of discussion, in my opinion. With that, I'm out. Thank you very much for watching. If you've not already, hit that subscribe button up there. Like or dislike down below. Get those comments in and I will see you very soon. Thank you very much for watching.